a, again, a core first year subject in the faculty, which is Human Biosciences B, which quite obviously follows on from Human Biosciences A that Yossi was talking about. Um, we found these subjects are probably two of the hardest subjects that students do in the first year because they are the anatomy and physiology subjects. They are also prerequisites for many of the subjects they do in second year. They have to know the knowledge. We, in, certainly in the anatomy component, which is a good part of this second semester subject, we expect them to know it when they're coming into second year. We expect them to be up and running in first week with this knowledge. Um, that is a problem in itself, which is what we're explaining today. So I'm not talking about the quizzes. We do that too. In fact, we've picked up the, the 10 quizzes and are continuing with them this year. But I'm talking about how we tackled the team assessments. I'll be talking about the initial setup and how we went initially, and then Di is going to talk about how we're doing it now. Thanks. Initially, we, we are an inquiry-based subject. We work in teams. Our students have two lectures a week and two hours of workshop a week. So we set up the whole system with inquiries that last about four weeks. So they're looking at, for example, the musculoskeletal system, the nervous system, and then we take them into a bit of the body, um, looking at the back and regions of the body with the trunk. They had a number of assessments in there, and part of it was team assessment. At that stage, the team assessments were one of three assessments they did for each inquiry. So there was a lot of assessment in the inquiries. They did a multiple choice test, they did an online assignment, multiple choices also online, and they did a team report. The team report was the report where they worked in their teams, they worked on it weekly, they had meetings outside, they went away and had a week to submit the team report after we finished the inquiry. They traditionally, as Di was talking about earlier, they tended to allocate tasks. We encouraged that. We said, yes, fine, go away and work on a task. Come back and discuss it in the team. Make sure everyone is happy with the result that person has come back with. Make sure you all understand the results that that person has come back with. And that's where it fell down. So generally, one person did the work, submitted it to the person who was pulling it together because they decided that was the easiest way to do it. They didn't want to put it together as a team. They'd give one person the job of putting it all together and submitting it, and they wouldn't read the whole thing. So we had, thank you, a problem. What we did was then compare the team assessment. We looked at individuals within those teams and their individual exam mark at the end. That lovely graph shows you that there is absolutely no correlation between the fact that they got a beautiful team result, you know, 80 90 percent, and what their exam result was. It was absolutely, yes, absolutely nothing. We analysed, as you can see, 1,126 students across five campuses. It was telling us that the students were working well in the teams. The teams did get good marks. The students, it was peer assessed and was adjusted for peer work by the students' own adjustments. Um, but the students were not picking up the information that the other person had done. So when we got to the exam, it wasn't working at all. So I'll talk a little bit and I'll come back in a minute. So yeah. what was happening then? So what was happening, I was not here uh, next for the first two years of the team report. So I can just comment a little on what Sherry's observed with 2009. No real good coherence between what you did in the team and what you could take to the exam and demonstrate as you're learning. You literally knew one part of a multi-question team report. Uh, in 2010, I think that they changed the model a little and decreased the amount of team marks to kind of fix up that problem. And they found an improvement. In 2011, they um, increased the time for the team task and found another improvement. It went from 20 to 30 minutes to an hour long time for them to complete the report. So it reduced the pressure. And I think that allowed um, individual members to participate more in it. And that's when I arrived. So the first day at La Trobe, I observed them completing a team report and saw 
good interaction. I didn't know the students at all, obviously, but to see that everyone was doing something and it wasn't, I'll do this one question and then sit back and relax. Um, in 2012, we improved it again and we got better links between the materials. So students could connect what they had done in weeks two, three, and four with what we were assessing in week five. So it's been a, a gradual improvement of getting everybody contributing as much as is possible in the team and in seeing better links between what they had learned and what we were assessing them on. Earlier on, I don't think they saw a great connection between the assessment task and what they had previously studied. So the thing, the other thing we changed was they had with that first disaster, well, that first result, first attempt, attempt, we had that week where they, they worked at home, they had the week they submitted it. After that, we tried getting it working just in class. So they would do the assessment in class. There was no external work. They'd build on the material they'd done throughout the weeks beforehand, and then they'd look at the in-class activities and work on it in class. And that's what Di was commenting. The first year, we gave them half an hour to do the final in-class report. It was only a two-page report, and by that I mean very short answers or annotating diagrams, not two pages of solid writing in half an hour. So they were contributing to that. The reason we did that, you can see on the next slide, um, forget the example, I don't expect you to worry about the fact that we've got an eccentric contraction. We're looking at the idea of what happened in a team report. So in the team, for example, if I looked at a movement, I was looking at knee flexion there. In the team, 65% of people got the principle, got the muscle right and did really well. When I asked exactly the same question in the exam, this was in that first year, I changed the joint, but it's exactly the same question. 23% got it right. And yet before, I had a majority of people getting it right. The, in the team, when we um, looked at the principle and the muscle, no one got it wrong in the team. They got the right principle, they got the right muscle. They had incorrect combinations later on. But basically, they got the right idea, but in the exam, they still got the idea but got the wrong muscles. They just didn't get the idea. And the point we were trying to get there was they needed these principles, these ideas in second year. And if they didn't get them at this stage, we lost them. We had to reteach it in second year. We do give revision in second year, but we had to get the idea of taking it into second year, taking it through their course because they actually need it in their clinical work as well. Not necessarily that particular idea, but they needed the anatomy and physiology. It was prereqs for a lot of clinical subjects. So that's when we decided that the team parceling out and handing back a week later wasn't going to work. And that's why we changed it. But do I want to continue in talking a little bit more about it? Yes, and I think as a facilitator, it's a lot easy, easier to manage an assessment process that happens in the classroom and there's not the capacity for people to forget to bring what they were working on last week. Somebody's left it wherever. So having it in-house made it a lot more um, smooth to manage from my perspective and probably from the students' perspective. So we're moving on, um, we're retaining our inquiry theme of the subject that we've done a fairly substantial revision and taken back some new content to put in. Um, and we are remaining with practical activities and then team-based assessments around that. Although we have reduced the number of assessments in HBB and we've also picked up the HBA mastering quiz model, which is new for us. There's a fair bit going on, but there usually is. And we're replacing um, team assignments within class activities towards the end of the subject, so mixing up the assessment a little bit. And one of the earlier speakers was saying, why not introduce some fun? So we're attempting to do that in the latter part of the subject and have um, quite a few fun, well, depends on your definition of fun, activities based around um, musculoskeletal changes in pregnancy. So students are going to be putting on pregnancy backpacks or front packs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not good in the moment. And balloons under the shirt and we'll be looking at applying the basic principles that they have studied earlier in the subject into you know, a scenario that they will experience either as personal level or as a practitioner in some format or whatnot. So it's a little bit of fun. And it also really well integrates the earlier parts of the of the HBB. What's on the last slide, Sharon? <laughs> the last slide is we just have to point out um, 
that's actually what you were doing. Yes, yes. that's the next slide, I think. Sorry, we, we skipped one. Um, these are big subjects. So yes. when we're talking team reports, we are talking team reports. <coughs> We've got 32 people so facilitating these subjects. We have 62 groups, 300 and whatever it is, teams across five campuses. So it does take a little bit of organisation. So we, we acknowledge all our facilitators across the five campuses, of which we are two. There's a few more in the back of the room down there. Yes. Thank you. And I think also.